Well, they just said you have to, you'd be reading for the part of a witch, and it's in the, the 18th century. And I had done, um, I had done graduate work in theater, and in, in speech and drama, and I had done a lot of period plays, and in summer stock as well. And I had this kind of idea that I could do it, because it was back in the 18th century. But um, what was my reaction? Well, <laughs> I had just gotten to New York, and it was my second audition of my life, professional audition of my life. So I was very inexperienced, and I think my only reaction to it was one of paralyzed fear. It was with Jonathan. And he was very nice, and it was a love scene, so we practiced it a couple of times, and I actually felt he made me feel quite relaxed, mm. as relaxed as, as, and they put it on camera. We taped at um, 3 or 3.15, and the show came on the air at 4. So just as we finished taping, we were able to go into the, it was a little dark room and watch the watched the show that we had taped the week before, two weeks before, sometimes the day before. It was very embarrassing because often there were forgotten lines or miscues or flubbed words or stiff readings or being in the wrong spot, looking at the wrong camera. So we were all painfully aware of the fact that it, it looked rough, and it seemed rough, and that we had made s some mistakes. But every once in a while, there'd be a fairly good scene, and we could be proud of that. But I think, I think all actors, when they watch themselves, are very critical. I think it's very hard. Some, many actors will not watch themselves. They ran the commercials onto the same tape, so we would have enough time to change costumes in, w during the commercial. That was all the time. And then, the tape that we made that day was the tape that went on the air. So it was, was very much like there was no editing and no stopping to start over if there was a mistake. And, and uh, it felt like doing theater. It felt like doing summer stock because it was so under-rehearsed. We'd only rehearsed it that one day. We'd only actually run the show four or five times. And uh, it, it, it just... It, it, it felt very much like live summer stock. But it was fun, lots of fun. It was a great challenge. <laughs> it, had a, it had an energy that I don't think soap operas have today for that reason, because the actors know if they make a mistake, they can, they can stop and start over. But I never stopped. Right. Once in a while, Jonathan would stop, but nobody would do anything. You have to start again, and that would go on the air. So. No, you didn't stop. You, it, it's wonderful training. Because when I came to California and I became, and I started to do film, I, they love an actor that doesn't blow lines and can do a, ta a full take and, and, uh, and is not all the time going, oh, I want to stop, I want to do that over, I want to do that over, like a lot of actors who have never had this kind of experience or tempted to do. I sort of feel that, uh, that it's hard for me to stop, even if I don't like the take because of the years on Dark Shadows. It's sort of like I'm fixed, and it's hard for me to stop. We knew that we were doing unusual and original television, and we enjoyed it for that reason. And sometimes the special effects didn't quite come off. If you had to appear or disappear in a room, they would superimpose your body into the room. And sometimes it wasn't quite the right size. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be kind of shrimpy looking, you know, you'd be kind of a little bit smaller than the table. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, and then we, and I had to constantly cast spells on people, where I would stick pins in dolls, or I would tie uh, handkerchiefs around dolls' necks, and these dolls would be um, some actor on another set, and that actor would be in, the, and I would be pulling the handkerchief tighter, and the actor would be having tea, and he'd suddenly go, Ugh! <laughs> <laughs> So that was, it was, we had a great time.
We realized that it was popular, yes, because we, everywhere we went we were recognized and there was a huge crowd outside the studio when we, when we finished in the afternoon of autograph seekers and people, sometimes people would show up, the same people every single day, day in and day out. They, they worshipped some of us and, and walk us to the subway. <laughs> and um, I can remember standing on the subway when school got out and seeing two or three hundred kids on the subway platform all waiting to take the train, and they would see me, and they would start screaming, and they would run to the other end of the platform, because they were so terrified, because I was so evil. And, uh, and we got tons of fan mail. Boxes of letters would come. And, uh, you know, all we thought was, oh, God, I have to answer all these letters. You know? I got phone calls and, and threats of death. and. Um, I think mostly they were just, they were just, they admired the character because she had tremendous strength. You know, she was coming in at the beginnings of the woman's, whole woman's movement. And she was very independent and uh, uh, they sort of missed the fact that she was obsessed with her love for Barnabas and that that was really destroying her. They just liked the fact that she could um, do people in. Um, but they also hated her, sure, because they loved, they adored Barnabas. They usually say, uh, you were my idol, you know, I wanted, to, I wanted to grow up to be just like you and, and uh, have power over all the men in my life and uh, I love the way that you got everything you wanted and, uh, and how strong you were. And they say, were you, they ask me, were you really interested in witchcraft? Did you study witchcraft? And I, I always say no, I, mm. I just said the lines. Yeah.